Hello everyone, Pixelmonk here, and welcome to an old school RuneScape guide showing you how to complete the quest Lunar Diplomacy. This quest is considered experience difficulty and is long, about an hour and 45 minutes. You must be able to defeat several level 111 Sukwas and a level 79 Mi. The requirements for this quest include 61 crafting, 40 defense, 49 fire making, 5 herb lore, 65 magic, 60 mining, 55 woodcutting. All these skills are not boostable. And also the completion of the Lost City, the Fremnic Trials, Rune Mysteries, and Shiloh Village quests. The required items for this quest include Tinderbox, 1000 coins, Guamleaf, Marintil, Pestle and Mortar, Hammer, Tooth Red, Needle, an axe that you're willing to lose, a pickaxe, Spade, Draymond's Staff, Armor, Weapon, and Food. Runes for the final boss as lunar armor must be worn. Ability to access the air, earth, fire, and water runecrafting altars, either by using the tiaras or talismans or using the abyss, which is much faster. Although not required, it is highly recommended that you also have stamina potions, enchanted lyre, which you can get by offering raw shark, manta ray, or sea turtle to Fossa Grimmins altar southwest of Relica. Amulet of Glory, and several home teleports that are set to Relica. There are a couple of maps that are provided in the description, so open these up and keep them handy throughout the quest. You start the quest by traveling to Relica. Use the Enchanted Lyre or your home teleport to get there. First, talk to Lokar Sea Runner, who is located at the most western dock of Relica. When prompted, say, you've been away from these parts for a while. Why did you leave? And why not? I've always wondered what the state of my innards are. He will tell you about the Moon Clan. Then talk to Brunt the Chieftain, who is located in the Long Hall of Relica, and receive a Seal of Passage. Select Ask About a Seal of Passage. It is important that you keep this item on you at all times throughout the quest, and be careful as to not bank this item. Talk to Lokar again and say, let's be on our way to sail to the Pirate's Outpost. Climb the ladders to the top deck of the ship and speak to Captain Bentley. Ask him to sail you to the Lunar Islands. A cutscene will occur where you just sail in a circle. For this part of the quest, there will be lots of talking, so spam the spacebar to get through the conversations faster. Talk to the navigator Bird's Eye Jack, who is located on the lower deck. Talk to the captain again and suggest that it was the navigator's fault. Talk to the navigator again, who will say that a jinx has been placed on the ship. Talk to the captain. Speak to Eagle Eye Schultz, who is located on the same deck as a captain at the northern end of the ship. Head back towards the captain and use the ladder to go up one deck and talk to the cabin boy. Head to the very bottom of the ship by using the ladders, then all the way south to talk to Beefy Burns. Talk with the cabin boy again. Talk with the captain. Talk to Letrius Lee, who is located next to the cabin boy. Talk to first mate Davy Boy, who is located on the same deck as the captain. Talk to the cabin boy one more time to receive an emerald lantern lens and a lantern. Use them on each other and light it with your tinderbox. You need to find five symbols and rub them away to remove the jinx. The first symbol is located on the same deck as a cabin boy on the cannon that is to the east. Use your lantern on the cannon and choose Rub Away. The second symbol is located on the same deck as a captain in the room that is all the way south. Use your lantern on the northwestern wall chart. The third symbol is located in a chest in the basement near the ladder. The fourth symbol is located on a support beam that is closest to Beefy Burns. The fifth symbol is located in a crate near Beefy Burns. When all the seals are wiped, talk to the captain again to sail to Moon Clan Island. Once you are on Moon Clan Island, be aware that there is a bank and a general store that you can access if you need to. First, talk to Meteora, who is located in the southwestern part of the village. She will tell you to find the Oniromancer, who is located at the southeastern part of the island near the Astral Altar. As you walk to the Oniromancer, you may be attacked by Sequas, but just run past for now. Talk to the Oniromancer, who will ask for you to collect items. 
The first item is the Waking Sleep Potion. Talk to Baby Yaga, who is located in the Walking Chicken House that is in the northern part of the village just behind the bank. Say, The Oniromancer told me you may be able to help. She'll give you a special potion bottle and will tell you to get a guam leaf, marantel, and a crushed sukwa tooth. First, you'll need to fill the bottle with water, so just walk outside and a little south to a house with a sink to fill it. Now is where you'll have to defeat several level 111 sukwas. Be sure to wear good melee armor and bring food, as this enemy can hit you hard and often with melee attacks. This enemy is weak to stab in range, so choose whatever weapon you would like. Head to the southeastern part of the island near the Oniromancer to fight the Sukwas. Collect the tooth and four Sukwa hides for later. You use the Sukwa tooth on the pestle and mortar to crush it. Add the guam leaf, marantel, and crushed tooth to the potion. Talk to the Oniromancer again. Here is where you'll need to access the air, fire, water, and earth altars, so bring your Draymond staff. You can also bring your tiaras and talismans if this is the only way you can access the altars, but it is much faster to access them through the abyss, which you can use after the abyss mini quest. The tiaras and talismans are not necessary if you use this method. Use the Draymon staff on the air, fire, water, and earth altars in that order. Every time you enchant the staff, you'll notice that the name will change to Lunar Staff Part 1, Lunar Staff Part 2, and so on until you have finished. Now you'll need to go back to the Oniromancer. So use your Enchanted Liar or Home Teleport and go back to Lokar. He will bring you to the Pirate's Outpost again, where you'll need to talk to the Captain to get back to Moon Clan Island. Talk to the Oniromancer who will say that you'll need to make 8 pieces of clothing. Go through all the dialogue options to find out how to make each piece. Bring your pickaxe and hammer and run to the northeastern part of the island. The Sukwas here are more powerful and may cast Ice Barrage at you, so be careful you will find a dungeon. Go into the dungeon and mine one of the stalagmites. You should receive a lunar ore. Use your enchanted lyre or home teleport to go back to Relica. Use the lunar ore on the furnace and then the anvil to create a helmet. Talk to Pauline Polaris, who is located at the northwest part of the village where you will have to guess her name. First choose Pauline when prompted and then Jane Blood Hagic Maid. She'll give you a cape. Talk to Meteora again, who will tell you that she'll give you her amulet if you give her a lost tiara. Go back and fight the Sukwas in the southern region of the island until they have dropped a special tiara. Pick it up and talk to Meteora again to get the amulet. Speak to Rame Sersalis at the clothes shop who can tan the four hides for you. Ask you know the ceremonial clothes. Once tanned, use your needle on them to create the lunar torso, trousers, gloves, and boots. Speak to Celine in the center of the village who will give you a riddle. Bring your spade and travel to the west of the island until you come across some blue flowers. Use your spade on these specific flowers that are shown here. Return to the Oniromancer who will give you all of your items back and some kindling from the first ever magic tree. Put on all your lunar gear. Go to the bank and put away any combat equipment that you might have on you. Keep only in your inventory an axe that you're willing to lose, the seal of passage, the kindling, the potion, tinderbox, and runes for the final fight. Set up your automatic rune spells now. Enter the long building that is located on the west side of the village. Use your waking sleep potion on the kindling. Light the brazier in the center of the room with your tinderbox and add the kindling to it. Be sure to not log out during the next part of this quest. You are now in dreamland. Talk to the ethereal man or ethereal lady nearby where they will tell you that you need to complete six puzzles. After completing each puzzle, be sure to talk with the ethereal to update your progress. First step on the yellow platform that is located southwest. Talk to the ethereal fluke who will explain the challenge. All you have to do is add up the dice to the number that he gives you. The dice only rolls two ways, meaning that every time you click on a four to roll, it will always roll to a three and vice versa. When you roll a 6, it goes to a 1. When you roll a 5, it goes to a 2. I've included in the video an easy way to add up all the dice depending on the number given. You'll have to do this several times. Once you have completed this task, talk to the ethereal from the beginning to update. Next, enter the pink southeastern platform. Talk to the ethereal numerator to start the challenge. You'll be given a set of numbers, for example, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3. 
there are two answers that you'll need to give from the sequence. All you need to do is find the next number in the pattern. The pattern and the sequences are all the same. The first answer for 1, 4, 2, 5, 3 sequence is 4, because the pattern goes 1, 2, 3, 4, skipping every other number in the sequence. The second answer is 6, because the pattern goes 4, 5, 6. Use the same logic for every sequence given. Once you have found the correct numbers, choose them from the floating ones. You'll have to do this several times. Once complete, talk to the Ethereal from the beginning to update the quest. Enter the blue northeastern platform. Talk to the Ethereal Perceptive to start the challenge. All you have to do is chop more wood than him. Go to the other side of the platform and chop 20 logs and deposit them in the center of the room. Once complete, talk to the Ethereal from the beginning to update the quest. Enter the white northwestern platform. Speak to the Ethereal Guide. This test is to challenge your memory. All you have to do is jump between the various platforms to reach the other side, but some of these platforms will fall. Memorize which platforms are safe to reach the other side. The path is different for everyone. Once complete, talk to the Ethereal from the beginning to update the quest. Enter the green eastern platform. Speak to the Ethereal. All you have to do is beat him in a race by jumping over the hurdles. I suggest that you spam click on the first hurdle as he announces the race to get a head start. Once complete, talk to the Ethereal from the beginning to update the quest. Enter the green southeastern platform and speak to the Ethereal Mimic. This task is exactly like the mime random event in the game. All you have to do is copy the emotes he uses. Once complete, talk to the Ethereal from the beginning to update the quest. The Ethereal will ask you if you are ready for the final challenge where you will have to face yourself. This battle is pretty easy, however you may be teleported throughout the room, which can be annoying. Once you have defeated the enemy, talk to the Ethereal again and exit the dream world using the lectern in the center of the room. Talk to the Oneromancer again to finish the quest. Congratulations, you have received two quest points, 5,000 magic experience, 5,000 runecrafting experience, seal of passage, access to lunar isle, lunar equipment, and lunar spellbook, ability to use astral altar, 50 astral runes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.